Hello and welcome to live coverage of the Audi Sport R8 LMS Cup. This is round seven from Suzuka in Japan and Sean Henshawood, the heavens are about to open once again today. It's been raining torrentially on and off. We've just put the umbrella up as we're moments away from race time. Well, it's been interesting. Yesterday we had two 45-minute sessions, dry conditions. Last night the heavens opened. It hasn't really relented. We lost the first qualifying session. We had to take the second qualifying session to set this grid. And we've just seen him pull up there now, the reigning champion, Andrew Harrianto, his second-ever pole in the Cup. He will start from the front, but what are the conditions going to bring? It's going to be very, very testing. Well, it feels almost like a night race with the headlights going on from some of the cars. But before we get into the action from today, let's take a look back at the highlights from last time out in Shanghai in China. Well, Sean, the cars will be fighting for position on the track. We're fighting for position under this umbrella right now. It is, as we talked about, it is opening up. But let's look back at Shanghai. Those two wins for Anthony Leo, but several other people getting back into the championship race. Well, you go back before that to Zhuhai. The man behind us, Alex Au, had pole for both races, didn't finish a single lap. He was really behind the eight ball. He came through to be second behind Anthony Liu in both those races, has put himself back into contention for the championship. But what's interesting is Yasser Shahin still leads. He had a 22-point advantage going into Shanghai. It got withered down to about 18 points for this weekend. Championship still wide open. Nobody wants to win this thing. Last year, you had four wins to Burt Birambakti. You had three wins to Andrew Harrianto. They're basically winless. They've got a lot of work ahead of them. Of course, Harrianto's come through. He's got pole position. He could be in a good position today. That's right. He's, uh, of course, he said, on the front row of the grid alongside Alex Howe. He was about half a second ahead of the field in a pretty truncated qualifying session earlier today. What do you make of his chances? Well, I think Alex Howe had the pace, to be perfectly honest. Of course, both those drivers have had experience here in the past. 2017 for Harry Anto, he did double duty, two classes that weekend. The rest of the field really don't have the experience. Although Burt Birenbarkti, I'd keep a close eye on the tie driver. He tends to do quite well in the wet. He's had experience here before. Now, Andrew Harry Anto needs a good couple of performances here to get back. If he's got any chance of retaining the championship title that he holds, Yasser Shine in pole position at the moment, and he has this 
habit, we've talked about this before, of doing well on his first race at a track. Another debut here for him at Suzuka. Uh, are we going to see that trend continue? We could see that trend to continue, but the thing is the weather. We don't know what it's going to do. A lot of water crosses the track at the breaking point down at the end of the main straight. They need to be mindful of that. They've been a little bit haphazard on the starts in some of the previous races. They really can't afford to do too much of that this time around. Well, Sean, I'm going to make a very quick dash for the commentary box and leave you to walk us through the field. But it's Suzuka. Let's take a look at some colours from the, from the area. with the director of Audi Sport Customer Racing Asia, Martin Cool, and uh, this is a little bit shades of Spa. We need to explain a little bit about that. We are at Spa a couple of weeks ago for the road to Spa with some of these drivers on the grid. The heavens open, torrential rain. That might put uh, Andrew Harrianto in pretty good stead, but he needs some points. He does need some points. So he, he drove in the rain at night at Spa brilliantly. Uh, he won the qualifying he's on pole uh, so I guess he's quite comfortable with the rain now um, I think we all are um, uh, well let's see it's it, it's challenging I mean for all the drivers uh, this is an iconic but also not very easy circuit so in these conditions uh, yeah they, they really have to be careful but uh, uh, the spirits were high when I talked to the drivers before the race they they are for the challenge but it's it's, it's gonna be it's gonna be a challenge we talked about this championship nobody seems to want to win it this year Last year there were the two, it was Burrett and Andrew. This year everybody's right in the mix. Absolutely. Uh, almost everybody actually had one or two unexpected, not so good results. Uh, so that nobody really uh, was able to uh, get enough points to, to be ahead, but that's also a good thing. I mean, this, this is a history of the Cup has shown many times that um, our grid is very competitive and the drivers are actually fighting until the last very event. Looks like we better get off the grid because it looks like they want to get these things going. Yes. I'll let you go. We'll talk to you a little bit later. But things are really starting to get underway. Martin gets off the grid. We'll get off the grid as well. You can see the cars there. The lights are on. This is uncharted waters for a number of these drivers because they haven't done a lot of miles around this circuit. One short and 15-minute session in the rain. So for a number of them, the two Australians here on the second row. In fact, that's not Spirit Brewer and Barkley. There's Tony Bates. He's not been here before. Yasser Shahin has not been here for, before. So too Vincent Florendo. They have got a little bit of work ahead of them. It's going to be very, very tough. They're pioneers as they go through this race. It's going to be a tough start to what will be the 87th race of the Cup in the eighth season. And uh, we will just wander back because this weekend too is not just about the Audi Sport R8 LMS Cup, of course, it is the Intercontinental GT Challenge, the Suzuka 10 hour. We have three entries, one of which is also run by Absolute Racing, responsible, of course, for the bulk of the teams in the Audi Sport R8 LMS Cup. And we will see them carry on after a third position here last year. They'll be looking for more. It's going to be big for them. Team WRT as well. And Hidotsuyama have former cup champion Alessio Piccarillo as part of their crew this weekend. So there is more action that will come on Sunday for us. Race one today, race two also going to take place on Saturday. So we're all over by Saturday afternoon. This is the penultimate round of the eighth season. We're up to Mark, he will be in the commentary position. We're about ready to go for a start behind safety car for round seven of the 2019 Audi Sport R8 LMS Cup.
Well, Sean, that's exactly right. We are starting this race under the safety ground. The big question at this stage is just how long will it stay out for? Let's hope we get some racing, but nothing is certain today of all days. We had a cancelled qualifying session initially earlier today. And you can see condition wet. I think that's the understatement of the day. It is not too hot, but it's all about the rain. They can get some standing water here on this track, and that will be the issue that all the race officials will be keeping a keen eye on early in this race. Nothing we can do about the weather. As we get confirmation here of the current championship standings, Yasser Shahin with a pretty healthy 15-point lead, but still with four races to go. There are a lot of points left to be won. Alex Auer is second, and he starts from pole position with Tony Bates in third. And then it's Sheng Yan Wen, who's unable to start today to cement his lead in the GT4 category. So Harry Anto and Au on the first row of the grid. Then comes Yasser Shahin, the championship leader, with Burrit Burambakdi in position number four. Tony Bates alongside Vincent Florendo. They start from the third row. Next up, George Nakas making his cup debut, as is Shozo Tagahara, a local driver from Japan, and Wang Dengjia in the GT4 category which Takahara is also in, will go from the fifth row of the grid. But a reminder, if you're just joining us here live for coverage of the Audi Sports R8 LMS Cup, the start will be under the safety car, and no signs that it will be going in anytime soon. So let's take a look at this iconic Suzuka circuit, one of the top circuits in the world as rated by many of the best drivers who have ever raced. Over five kilometers in length and 18 turns, as you can see, with that crossover, the S's section, and plenty of other famous areas. Well, Sean, you probably got pretty wet like I did on the way back here. And, well, we'll see once we get underway just how much spray there is. Yeah, plenty of precipitation, and uh, it's going to be interesting. I think they're going to start the clock. We'll be running behind the safety car, maybe a lap or two, just so that they can get a feel for what the circuit's like. We're talking about it down there on the grid. There's a big channel runs across the circuit on the run down to turn one at the braking point. They're aware of that, but they're not really sure of exactly where all the standing water is on the circuit. Now, a lot of the drivers have said that uh, it drains very well. There's not a lot of serious water that they have to think about, but this precipitation is pretty heavy. There is uh, some threat at one stage that some of these sessions might stop for a little while for the rain to clear, but uh, I think we should be pretty good. It looks like it's probably going to pass at some stage during the race. It's been very intermittent during the day, so there's a lot for the drivers to consider. And it's also late in the day here. It's uh, coming up for 5.30 local time here in Japan, but it's just getting so dark and gloomy. You can see the headlights are on. That's another issue for the visibility for these drivers, and of course feeding into the whole safety aspect here. So it's Andrew Harianto and Alex Au at the front of this field. But ahead of them, of course, that safety car. And safety, safety, sorry, Mark, cutting you off, but safety, of course, is paramount for all of these things. You can't quite see that channel across the circuit. It's just near the uh, entry road that was on the left of the circuit. That's uh, just for access to the teams. The uh, boss of Audi Sport Customer Racing in Europe, Chris Reinker, right of screen. Of course, uh, our very own Martin Kuhl in the middle. There is the number 125 entry that will be a part of the Suzuka 10 hour. They have faced a little bit of weather. There's been a few red flags across the course of the weekend. You go back to 2017 when we were here as part of the Audi Sport R8 LMS Cup sixth season. And uh, a lot of discussion from three-time cup champion Alex Jung about this being an old school Formula One circuit. Now what he means by old school Formula One circuit effectively is it's very technical but very tight. There's very little margin for error. And of course this circuit has been instrumental mental over a lot of years with the history of Formula One and the sport. Of course, uh, 
Alain Prost, Ed and Senna. There have been some great battles at the chicane. That ended and settled one championship, of course. You go to James Hunt and Nicky Lauda further back into the 70s. That had an impact on the championship. This is a very testing circuit, but it's also a circuit that a lot of these drivers really have been looking forward to attending. Well, Sean, the safety car is coming in this lap, but you can still uh, see very, very wet, and so it'll be interesting to find out just how quickly these drivers are going to be pushing it in the early stages of this race. You don't get any points if you spin out early, of course. So it's down to Harianto to set the early pace with Alex Al pressing. And we saw Alex Al really pushing the pace during the qualifying session. He was right up behind Yasser Shahin at the beginning, wasn't he? I think there was a little bit of gameplay in all of that as well. Of course, Alex, our experienced campaigner, he uh, he will be putting his knowledge to good use. I actually had to ask Yasser Shahin yesterday after those two dry 45-minute sessions, one of them red flagged twice, so limited laps. Have you been here before? He said, no, I haven't. I, I'm really enjoying it. His pace defied the fact that this was his very first trip to Suzuka Circuit. So Yasser Shahin is certainly one to watch. He's leading this championship currently, I said 18 points. My math, you're going to have to pick me up on that. It's actually 15. No, it's not. It's, uh, it is 15 points, sorry. To uh, Alex Au. And Alex Au twice to Anthony Liu last time out at Shanghai. He is going to try and press his advantage and experience here and push Andrew Harrianto. You go down to Andrew Harrianto, the reigning champion. He is a full 32 points back from the championship points leader. He has a lot of work to do, of course. This weekend, there is 52 points up for grabs if you set fastest lap and you also win both those races. So nothing's finished. We still have four races left in this championship. So things are uh, getting set to go. You can see the safety car has started to pull away from the field. Andrew Harrianto will control the field. He'll be the first one to jump onto the gas. These control Pirelli wet weather tyres doing the job. But again, under these conditions at speed, they are very much pioneers as they get into what will be the third lap coming into the chicane and we get set for a start. He's on it. He wants to get on it too early because the uh, safety car still isn't off the circuit yet. But Andrew Harrianto very, clean, very keen to press on and uh, go for what would be his first win of this season. So here we are. It is finally go time with just a little over 22 minutes on the clock here. Harrianto leads from Alex Au. We'll see in the early stages how this weather is affecting the field. Now, just for comparison's sake, in a free practice, they were lapping just a little over two minutes per lap. In qualifying, that was up to uh, about 2.17. So we'll see how just how wet it is how it affect, affecting the conditions when they get through the first racing lap here at suzuka into the s curves of course very famous down to dunlop curve into the two degners under the tunnel a very much called a figure eight circuit because it doubles back around itself underneath it back over the top 130r spoon curve these are very iconic circuits as corners rather in the world of motorsport and uh, these drivers in some cases are treading brand new ground as they come down to Spoon. This is further back. That is the GT4 entry. 505 of Shozo Tagahara, former Super GT competitor, making his debut in GT4 for the Audi Sport R8 LMS Cup. Under the bridge, you can see, and heading down to... Well, heading down to turn 12 and 13 and around Spoon Curve. That is the hairpin at turn 11. Now, Sean, in fourth position, Burt Beer and Barkley, he had a bit of a, an issue early on in qualifying, didn't he, with, uh, with the wet weather as well. And uh, he's not a fan of, uh, for example, the, the, the nighttime racing. So, again, the gloomy conditions is not going to be helping him. But if he can get up into the podium positions, that would be a fantastic performance from him. Well, he certainly has some work to do. He's not enjoying the greatest of years because he was right on the pace in the opener in Adelaide, in the heat, immense heat in Adelaide. He was right on the pace, but unfortunately in the end suffered two DNFs whilst he was right in the lead of the race going into the final couple of corners of uh, race two. Unfortunately, that was a second DNF for the weekend. That really put him back behind the eight ball. Four-time winner in season 2018. That put him right in the championship battle with Andrew Harrianto. It all came down to the final round. There is Harrianto. This is what he needs. He's putting that experience he took at the Spa 24-hour race recently to good use. So too Yasser Shahin. He felt that helped elevate him this weekend and made him more comfortable with coming to this circuit. They did a lot of miles because the 24-hour race is 48 times longer than a sprint race for the Audi Sport R8 LMS Cup. 
So they have taken that experience. Tony Bates, this is his debut here. He's just come back from shoulder surgery. Has uh, said that the doctor's given him the all clear and he is good to go. Currently holding down position number five. So it's Harry Anto, Alex Al, Yasser Shahin, Bert Berenbakhti, Tony Bates and Vincent Florendo. On screen, that's the car that was the 37 that took both victories at the hands of Anthony Liu at Shanghai. This weekend, George Nakis, who is making his debut in the championship, the Australian driver, has done a lot of historic racing in uh, sports cars. And, uh, well, not a lot. He's done a bit in Australia. The first time he's driven a GT3 car, he said, I'm really enjoying this. I think I need to do a little bit more of this. Was persuaded to come in by points leader Yasser Shahin. So far, he's enjoying himself. But what a baptism of fire when you consider you're coming to one of the most iconic circuits in the world in conditions such as this. Alex Au, the CDBS Racers entry, doing a very good job. He's not letting Andrew Harrianto go. 221 is the best so far. That's a little bit slower than we saw during qualifying. But again, conditions have deteriorated just ahead of the start of this race. There is the championship winner from last year, Andrew Harrianto. Alex Au, former AM Cup champion. Yasser Shahin still doing a good job. In fact, it looks like Harrianto has just pulled out a little bit of a gap just in the last couple of corners. So it could be that Alex Au has found the, uh, the limit of the grip and he's just trying to work his way through as they come down to Spoon Curve. Well, as you mentioned, uh, just about four seconds a lap slower than they were in qualifying, but you imagine they would pick up a little bit of time as they get slightly more comfortable with the conditions. A lot of spray still coming up from this track. Doesn't look as though there's too much rain falling, so hopefully we can complete the race without any further safety cars. But of course, uh, the incident, oh, well, the possibility of an incident here in these kind of conditions, uh, obviously higher than usual, particularly with uh, a number of drivers making their debut at this difficult circuit. Well, we have to make a, a point of uh, Shang Yen Wen, who is the championship points leader in the GT4 category. Unfortunately for him, in the late stages of qualifying, he uh, brought out the red flag with the car in the barriers. Uh, he found the level of grip. He'd been doing such a stellar job. Of course, two wins in the GT4 category last time out at Shanghai. He still is the championship points leader, but uh, that is going to get interesting. Anderson Tonoto, who's the reigning champion of GT4, unfortunately not here this weekend, so we send our wishes out to him. He was due to... Oh, he's gone in two deep has Alex Al just managed to gather it up before he wound up in the gravel trap. Well, he's learnt something out of that last time around. He set the fastest lap with a 221.3, four tenths faster than Andrew Harrianto, pulled in about four tenths that lap, but I gather this first sector is going to be a big loss for the man from Hong Kong, who expected a lot of things from Alex Al when we got to Juhai. He he, well, he came through with that promise. Of course, he's done a lot of miles on the Juhai circuit. He set pole position for both those races, but unfortunately, through no fault of his own, he was eliminated in uh, one accident, then an electrical issue or a, a technical issue with the car. Couldn't get him onto the grid for the second race at Juhai in a championship that really would have set him up. That round would have been ideal for Alex Howe. So he's been rebuilding since then. He went on to Shanghai, of course, and second to Anthony Liu, who was only going to do that one race. So he didn't need to push too hard. So the fact that Anthony had such a big advantage, he is a local expert at Shanghai, it really wasn't reflective of just how big the advantage was between Alex Howe and Anthony Liu because Anthony Liu wasn't in the championship so far as Alex Howe was considering it. He was looking at the bigger picture and we see that from Alex Al. He's done a lot of miles with the cup. He's a very, very clever and calculating driver. Well, Sean, as things stand, he's only going to pick up about three points on championship leader Yasser Shahin, who is just one place behind him at the moment in third. 18 points to 15. So Alex really needs to try and attack Andrew at the front of this field, get the 25 points for victory. We do have a rescheduled qualifying uh, session for tomorrow's race, so if he can get maximum points today and then put the pressure on tomorrow, then we can really start to have a championship race on our hands. Yeah, we did lose that first session again. It's been intermittent rain. It was very heavy in that first qualifying session. They elected to cancel the first 15-minute session. So the second session, which would traditionally set the grid for the second race on the weekend, Oh, now, is that the race leader who's just gone on too deep? No, that's Yasser Shahin. So he's run way deep further down the back of the circuit. So uh, he's had to consider that as well. That might have been uh, coming through 130R, actually. I mean, you go back to 130R. Remember that uh, 720 spin by uh, yeah. former champion Alex Jung? That was a couple of years ago now. Some of these drivers got experience then. One of them is the man on screen, Burt and Barkley, both won both 
of the AM Cup races during that event. So he has some prior experience here. He's been doing a very good job, but these conditions just don't discount the fact that uh, they are treacherous, and for many of these drivers, Vincent Florendo is another who rejoined the championship at Chu High and finished on the podium twice, the driver from the Philippines. They are making their first laps here in these challenging conditions, so a lot to consider. Yasser Shahin, very impressive, still holding on to position three, and uh, has about a four-second advantage over Burit Birambakti, who himself is trying to work his way back into this championship. Currently, Birambakti is 49 points down, additionally, alongside Andrew Harry Anto. The two of them going head-to-head, -head, of course, into the final in Malaysia last year. We go into the final in Malaysia again this year, 23rd and 24th of November. Well, a lot happening in this race, Sean. A lot of activity on this racetrack throughout the weekend with, of course, the Suzuka 10-hour a marathon race on Sunday here. So they have managed to squeeze in that 10 minute additional rescheduled qualifying session for tomorrow at 11.15 local time ahead of tomorrow's race, which will be round eight of the cup, which starts from 3 p.m. tomorrow. And talking about baptism of fire, that's uh, George Nakis on screen. He is uh, bringing up position number 17. He's in the Challenge Trophy this weekend. He's making his debut in a GT3 car in the pouring rain, in torrential conditions, for the very first time on one of the toughest circuits of them all, Suzuka International Circuit. And the local driver, Shozo Takahara, who is making his debut in the GT4 category, has a lot of experience on this circuit and not a lot of difference in the pace between those two cars in these conditions. But certainly, George is a little bit further back, but he was all smiles when I asked him how he was going on his debut run here with the Cup. He said, boy, I love these GT3 cars. They're a lot of fun. I'm traditionally a fan of the old school cars and uh, the older sports cars back from the 80s and 90s, but uh, he's really enjoying his debut run in the Cup. There is the race leader. He has opened up that advantage. He's now at 2.7 seconds to 21.3. Still that quick lap he did on lap four, the second real race lap to Andrew Harrianto. Alex Au, sorry, Alex Au is now quickest with a 2.21.3. So he's pulled back about eight tenths of a second. Gap to 2.8 seconds. Yasser Shahin is eight seconds back in position three and Burt Birambakti and Tony Bates is still back there. He's not too far back from Burt Birambakti. It's about four seconds down now. He's nine seconds down now. So he's lost a little bit last time round. So uh, he'll be looking to try and learn a little bit from this, but certainly those conditions, very, very challenging as we go back to the race leader in the number 28. Well, Sean, we've yet to see any positional changes so far. Is that just a question of these conditions the drivers being a little bit cautious, not wanting to make any mistakes and really push the pace. We have some, some, although the field is spreading out, but there are some battles around the midfield area. We have to remember it is an unforgiving circuit. You can see how limited the runoff is. In fact, it's, it, in some places, it's not even a car width off the edge of the circuit to the barrier. So they're mindful of that. Any issue of DNF right now in this championship is going to basically rule them out. So nobody wants to do that. We spoke about it on the grid with Martin Cool. No one has really stamped their authority on this championship yet. No one wants to put a foot wrong. A number of these drivers are rookies here at this circuit. We can't highlight enough just how treacherous the conditions are or just how unforgiving this circuit is. So they're taking all of that into consideration and they have some work to do. So they're being very, very careful and I think that is the thing to do. We've seen this this year already. You go back to Juhai and they got a little aggressive and a few guys threw themselves off the circuit. That had a big impact in this championship. They can't afford to do that today. Well, if Andrew Harrianto does win today, if, as things stand, with uh, just under 11 minutes remaining in this race, perhaps one of the most strangest wins of his of his career, just the fact that, not that it's been handed to him, but, you know, by almost by virtue of, of qualifying in pole position there, it has sort of been a little bit of pr procession at this stage, two-thirds of the way through the race. Alex Howes just suffered a problem that last lap. He might have gone off deep a little bit down at Spoon Curve, potentially... But uh, he's lost a fair bit of ground. It'll be interesting to see what his lap time's like because he was just less than three seconds back from Andrew Harrianto, but he's dropped a big length back now. So Andrew Harrianto's just crossed the line with a 2.21.3. And uh, the gap's now out to 4.5 seconds. All right, it wasn't quite as bad as it seems. It may have been the longer lens that was just defying how big that gap was. So he's okay. In fact, uh, 2.21.3, no, it's still his best. Last time around, 2.20. Well, pretty big, three pretty big zero. So we lost about lap, a second yeah. and a half. So there was a bit of a setback. By contrast, Yasser Shahin's made some ground. 221.2. Two. 
223 dead for uh, Bird Bear and Barkley. Tony Bates got a little bit of work to do, 226.3. So uh, he certainly wasn't at Spa. That was a fantastic event. You'll see some footage with that. Fans of the Cup will have no doubt seen it on social media already because the fans that watch the Cup and the magazine program will get to see just what unfolded at Spa. It was a miraculous event. Conditions very, very challenging on another tough circuit. Take this circuit and put it in the dark with very, uh, very heavy rain, and that will give you some indication of what those drivers were faced with. They got to the end of what was an incredible event. We're all very proud of the efforts that they put in. And of course, that was uh, Andrew Harrianto, it was Sun Jing Zhu, it was Jeffrey Lee who made his return to, uh, to an Audi, which was good to see, the man who's done more starts in the Cup, and Yasser Shahin, so a big event for them. There is George Nacker still back there in position number seven, and uh, he is Continuing to learn, he's made up some time at 2.33 his best, and he's done that in the last lap around. So he's again learning as he gets around this circuit. And the main thing as part of the cup, it's about having a good time for some of these drivers. And he's no doubt uh, putting this to good use and filing it away for future reference. And what great conditions to do it in. He's made a bit of a gap now on uh, Tagahara back there who's leading in GT4 and Wang Deng Jia. We've uh, got to highlight his run too. He did a good job on his debut. Only did the one race at Shanghai and he's running around here comfortably. Hasn't really put a foot wrong and he's back there in position number two. And in fact, he's only 13, uh, sorry, 15 seconds rather down on the GT4 leader. So that's a very impressive run for a man who's really had very limited running in a GT car, whether GT3 or GT4. Well, Sean, Andrew Harrianto still leads here four and a half seconds ahead of Alex Owen, Yasser Shahin in third. And we asked Andrew, ahead of the race, who was going to win. He kind of refused to, to, <laughs> to predict. I think they've given up this year after <laughs> everything that's gone on. Now, Alex Howes just punched out the fastest second and third sectors of this last lap. So he's gained, no, he hasn't gained, in fact. He's dropped just a fraction more. But that first sector was the one that uh, brought him unstuck. In fact, the fastest first sector has been Andrew Harrianto. So it does look like it's clearing just a little bit when you look at the long shot, but the damage has been done. The track's wet. Well, damage is done. That is uh, one of the GT4s. So that may be uh, Wang Ding Jia, who's just come off the circuit. So uh, he will regroup. I was talking about him not putting a foot wrong. I think that's the commentator's cursing him. I think I'll stop talking. I'll leave it to you. Well, both the top two drivers into the 220s uh, for the first time on that last lap. So as you said, they are beginning to pick up speed, but still good three seconds off the qualifying pace, which was, which was well, equally wet, you'd say. Well, 217s was the qualifying pace, yeah, so that wasn't too bad. In fact, 217.0 for Harry Anto, 217.5 for Alex Howe, who may well have gone quicker. He came in late in the session. He started with high tyre pressures. The team checked them and sent him out with about three minutes to go, and we had that red flag, yeah. unfortunately, for Shang Yang Wen. It was very, very late in the session. He said he just went in a little bit too hot into that corner. It, very technical nature. You talk to the drivers who are rookies here this weekend, and technical's the word they're using. What they mean is a lot of change of direction, mid to high speed corners. It's a lot to take in and again, daunting because the Armco is so close. There is not a lot of runoff at this circuit. In fact, talking to a couple of the mentors, Martin Rupp and Wei Rontan, they said exactly the same thing. I did promise I wasn't going to say that during the Blanc Pain race that uh, Wei Ron found the limit at 130R, but I think I needed something to say, so I'll, I'll have to take back on that one. He break, did find break, the limit and the tyre barriers. He's breaking anyway. promises again, Sean. Oh, it's all right. Got to stop doing that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the Australian in me. What can I do? Well. Anyway, <laughs> moving on as we get back to the leaders. So that is further back. That's Wang Ding Jia. And he is currently, well, he's uh, about two minutes down on the field. So the leaders may not be too far behind him, but still he's doing a very good job. Eight laps in the books. And the pace is still coming down. In fact, Andrew Harriet has just crossed the line again. 220.185, his fastest lap there is Alex Howe. Now, what's the gap? 4.3. He's pulled in quite a time. First into the teens at 219.55 for Alex Howe. I think he's going to run out of time. Just under five and a half minutes left on the clock. You can see just how much clearer it is now over those early laps. Yasser Shahin, by contrast, is now 15.9 seconds back from Alex Howe. So he's dropped a little bit more ground. In fact, he's dropped down. We've missed this. Something's happened yeah, with correct. Yasser Shahin back down behind Burt Berem Barkti. So his lap last time round was at 222, 233. 
He dropped 11 seconds on the pace of the leaders. In fact, 14 seconds down yeah. on Alex Howe. Something so we haven't seen it. Three there. The championship points leader, this won't be too bad, but now that is a bit of an advantage to, well, to Burt Birambakti and to uh, Andrew Hariante, but Alex Howe is going to have the bigger advantage because that will now be potentially 18 points depending on who the fastest lap has gone to. Well, that's gone to Alex Howe, so that could well be 19 points to him. And Yasser Shahin will be back down to 12, so he's closed the gap seven points. The difference at the moment is 15, so this really starts to make things very, very interesting. Experience, again, does show, especially in conditions like this, and Alex Howe is putting that to good use at the moment, despite the fact he is still 4.3 seconds down on race leader and reigning champion, Andrew Harrianto. Well, the Cup just has a habit of having very, very close finishes towards the end of the year, doesn't it? And it's already a pretty tight championship race. It's going to get even tighter if things stay as they are. Now, it looks like Yasser was able to recover from whatever issue he'd had on the previous lap. He's about three seconds down on Burritt uh, for third place, but losing some, uh, some points there in that position. Change the first one we've seen I think I'm right in saying uh, in the, this entire race. We were just looking at Vincent Florendo there, who again was on the podium twice in the Juhai event, the second uh, race weekend of the 2019 season. He was saying just before the race that he'd done no uh, simulator laps before this weekend, had never been here before, and yet he's punching out laps in the 225. So he's only five seconds or so off the pace of the race leader. They've had past experience here. So he said that he's finding this weekend harder than the tough weekend he had at Shanghai. So that is a bit of an indication of uh, just how difficult it is for somebody who's a rookie at the circuit. And he's doing a very, very impressive job. Well, Andrew and Alex now into the 219s, so uh, in continuing to pick up speed at the front of the field. But Andrew with nearly a five second gap, you can see that fastest lap, 219.5, and just fractionally slight, uh, faster than uh, Alex's own 219.559 but about a five second gap between the top two in this field with a couple of laps to go here. And there's Wendell Jar just moving aside for uh, race leader Andrew Harrianto. You can see a little bit of water at that part of the circuit too. That's through the S's. So uh, still something for them to continue as they climb up the hill. So uh, Yasser Shahin made a little bit of ground last time round on Burit Burin Bakhti, but uh, certainly the damage was done the previous lap when he dropped 14 seconds on the race leader. So we'll find out a little bit more about that. Remember to keep up to date with the social media platforms in both English and Chinese, the various platforms as we keep you abreast of what goes on with the Audi Sport R8 LMS Cup in the eighth season. This is race number 87 since the uh, series first began in 2012. There is Alex Auer just coming through down at the hairpin. And uh, as we go through the top of the circuit, it's down around turn 17. Andrew Harrianto continues his charge with less than two minutes left. So I'd suggest this is pretty close to the penultimate lap, although it's 30 minutes plus race leader one more lap. So there may well be two laps left in this race. Whether anybody can make any kind of position change, the field has strung out a little bit now. Yasser Shahin will be doing his best to try and close in on Biren Barkti, but he also knows he has a significant advantage. In fact, 32 points over both Harry Anto and Biren Barkti coming into this race. That is a reasonable lead, but he was hoping to build on that, not actually lose ground to anybody. For somebody who's a rookie in this race, finishing fourth isn't too bad when you consider Harry Anto, Alex Howe, and Burit Birnbach, you've all seen miles here at this circuit in the past. So first of the rookies, effectively, is Yasser Shahin ahead of Tony Bates and Vincent Florendo. That's right, he'll be uh, disappointed not to uh, cement a podium finish here, but you're right, the, uh, the championship battle is the bigger picture for Yasser Shahin. Currently leads from Alex out by 15 points. Now that will shrink as things stand, but uh, he will still be the championship re leader unless we see some dramatic positional changes in the final stages here. Dropped a second to uh, the man on screen in the CTBS races entry, did Andrew Harrianto last time round. The advantage is still just a shade under four seconds. Burupur and Bhakti, well, he's just slightly extended that advantage over uh, Yasser Shahin by three tenths of a second last time round. So that's staying fairly stationary. Tony Bates again, he was a rookie here first 45 minute practice session yesterday saw two red flag periods they got about seven or eight laps those drivers that just kept pressing on the second session he didn't fit green rubber a lot of the drivers went to the uh, 
the, the brand new DHD2 tyre, a fresh set of rubber, whereas Bates ran around with older rubber. He said maybe that was a bad strategy call at the end of the day. They probably could have bolted on a new set. They lost a little bit of ground, and then, of course, we went straight into qualifying this morning. It was wet, so he is still finding his way at the circuit. You could argue that Shahin has uh, put his time to better use, but, of course, Bates, since we last saw him at Shanghai, has had time off for surgery. He hasn't been in a race suit. Yes, a, yes, a Shahin. Well, he's done... Uh, Quite significant time in the race seat, of course, as one of those four drivers in the 2019 Spa 24 hour race just a couple of weeks ago at Spa in Belgium. And what an event that was. Clock is down to zero. This should be the penultimate lap. They should see the last lap board last uh, next time round. Let's try to pick up who we're looking at there. That is the race leader. So Alex Howe really is pushing. That uh, doesn't really look like a 3.9 second gap. Let's hope Arianto is going OK. Of course, the modern race car has a lot of electronics in it. This is very, very heavy rain. You don't know what's coming into the car and whether that can have a little bit of an impact. It doesn't sound bad. It doesn't seem to be an issue. It could just be that, uh, well, to win, you can win by a thousandth of a second at the end of the day. I'm sure Andrew Arianto won't want to do that. But he has the advantage at the moment as he comes through that famous last chicane to... Uh, come around what would be, I expect, the second last time to be greeted by the last lap board. Let's hope it uh, doesn't prove me a lie. There you go. There it is, under that uh, Pirelli signage. And uh, Andrew Harrianto goes through for, uh, well, I'm not going to say it. I was going to say what could be his first win of the year, but we've been known to curse that in the past. So I'm not going to say those things. Well, you're absolutely right about the gap, down to two, less than 2.5 seconds from nearly four seconds. So big change on that last lap now probably still too much unless we see something dramatic from Alex Howe. Lap traffic with Shozo Tegahara, but uh, he's an experienced campaigner around here, so yes, he does. He pulls out of the way. He's got nothing to gain or lose by uh, getting in the way of the race leaders, so he has uh, done the admirable thing, moved across, and that has allowed Andrew Harrianto to go through without too much of delay. So too Alex Howe. There they are heading back up the hill for uh, the final time. And they're catching up to George Nackis, as it turns out, too. So there is a little bit of traffic there. Can George uh, manage to keep out of the way? Depends on how much effort he's putting into keeping eyes forward. He sees the blue flag, potentially. He's got a lot to focus on. Again, these are his maiden laps of this circuit under these conditions. Well, Alex now is giving it everything. A fastest lap in that penultimate lap at 2 at 19.2. And some purple sections yep. flashing up on our board. He's probably going to run out of time, but he's certainly going to give it a go. George has seen uh, the race leader. He's led him through. No doubt he'll be aware that uh, Alex Howe isn't too far behind as they head down to Spoon. There is the blue flag. He wants to enjoy himself, doesn't want to be involved in an incident, moves across, gets off the race line, which is often in conditions like this the uh, the better line, which is why you'll often see in wet conditions the drivers taking what are relatively unique lines that are very different to the dry line on the race circuit. And uh, no doubt Andrew Harrianto and Alex Howe will be putting that theory to good use as we get down to the final stages of this race. And what would be another victory in the Cup to Andrew Harrianto? but uh, certainly more good championship points to Alex Howe. That is what we're looking at. Again, keep up to date with the social media platforms as we give you all the news about what's going on and stay with us tomorrow for what will be race number eight of the 2019 season. Race number 88 in the history of the Cup. You've been to, what, all 99 of them or something? <laughs> Maybe 66, 77. Well, that is that in the books. Andrew Harrianto, he's finished second and third so far this season, but that is his first win of this season as he bids to retain his championship. And that gives him, well, every chance, Sean, because uh, still three races to go, plenty of points up for grabs. And uh, it was stemmed from a solid qualifying position, but he didn't really put a foot wrong in the race, did he? Well, provisionally, that moves him to within about seven points of Yasser Shahin, too. We've got more to see about that, too. He will get an extra point for fastest lap in this race. There is Tony Bates just bouncing his way through the chicane for the final time, the number 24 AFS entry. That will be uh, a good result for him. He'll be happy with that, but also disappointed not to have made the podium. He would have preferred dry, dry conditions. So uh, things are interesting. You've got an update. Well, just the extra point uh, awarded uh, for pole position rather than for fastest lap. Uh, we have had different rules throughout the seasons in the Cup, sure. Well, memory is one of those I things know, that tends to believe you first, who, who doesn't need, it? Who needs it, yeah. age. The main thing, of course, 25 points in the books for Andrew this particular time. 18 for Alex Al. 
15 for Berger and Barkley and 12 for Yasser Shahin. So we'll get confirmation of the championship standings in a little while. Wang Dangja at the, at the rear of field. Solid uh, championship points for him in GT4. And uh, in this particular race, um, not threatening the leaders, but he moves up to uh, within, well, right up the field in the GT4 category. Now within just nine points of second position in his championship. Well, there are the, well, the provisional results. Of course, Andrew Harrianta takes his first win of the 2019 season. Alex Al again across the line. This is his third consecutive race crossing the line in position number two. Burr Burenbach, the upper position three after a setback for Yasser Shahin about two thirds of the way through the race. Shahin retains at the moment his position at the lead of the championship points table. We go back to Tony Bates in position number five. Vincent Florendo in position number six. And then on his debut, George Nakis in this championship is... Uh, Classified in position seven. Shozo Tagahara on his debut in the Audi Sport R8 LMS Cup will take victory in GT4. And Wang Dengjia, who is into his third race in the Cup, he made his debut at Shanghai. His second start, he takes position number two and some good solid points. Of course, uh, unfortunately for uh, Yang Cheng Wen, he came off in qualifying. He was here this weekend. Anderson Tonoto was also due this weekend but has had a late setback. Uh, he's having some surgery back at home, so we wish him all the best. A couple of other drivers, unfortunately, unable to be here this weekend due to other commitments. So no denying who the race winner is, provisionally again, but uh, you should see there's no real drama there. Now, you've been on the uh, calculator. That does concern me a little. We will get to that. <laughs> Can somebody please just back this up? Because well, I'm we a little <laughs> doubtful about the uh, the accuracy of this, but give it your best. We talked about uh, provisional race results. These are very much unofficial championship standings, but I think it's 93 for Yasser, 84 for Alex Al, 75 for Andrew Harrianto, and 64 for Berger and Bartley. So roughly 10 points between those top four, but still very close uh, given that uh, there's 25 plus an additional point per race here. We got the thumbs up. Will we see the trademark smile back? We haven't seen too <laughs> sure much of it this year. You can't get a sensible conversation out of him when he's in a good mood. He's all giggles. <laughs> so that might be back this time round. Bert Berenbach, you'll be pretty happy with that too. He's a little frustrated uh, early. Get the helmet off. Who are you pointing at? Oh, he's busy celebrating. There's Ingo made it. There is Chris Reinke, the boss of Audi Sport uh, Customer Racing. And uh, that looks like it might be the back of Martin Rump's head because he's done some miles here this year already with the Blanc Payne GT World Challenge Asia and Burit Berenbakhti. Good mates, the two of them. They were one, two in the championship last year. They dominated the championship last year. Funnily enough, coming into this round, identical on points, well down the order, as there is that iconic Ferris wheel here at Suzuka International Circuit on the outside of the final corner. But uh, we will hear very shortly from Andrew Harrianto down there, no doubt, with Sophie. And Alex Al will be happy with that too. Despite carrying a little bit of success ballast, that probably worked in his advantage this time round in these wet conditions. He'll, uh, he'll be happy with that haul of points too. So uh, now, no, no doubt we will hear from the winners very, very soon. Well, that was Alex Al who finished in second. Burritt, I think you have to, well, not necessarily performance of the day, but moving up into the podium positions, not known to, uh, to to like these particular conditions, so he's done uh, done very well today here. I think in these conditions, you could say there's been some uh, very stellar performances from the bulk of this field because uh, it was treacherous. It was very, very wet on the start. We're still sitting here saturated after our time on the grid, but for the drivers, a lot of work to do. We are uh, down on the grid, it seems, in Park Ferme with Sophie and the winner of this race. Andrew Harrianto, the reigning champion of the Audi Sport R8 LMS Cup. Let's uh, hear from the man from Indonesia. Congratulations, Andrew, especially with this raining condition from pole to wing with torrential rain. How does your feel and especially uh, talk us through the very beginning? Um, yeah, the beginning was a bit tricky because I didn't have any reference in front of me, but I just tried to keep it safe and um, it paid off. But towards the end, Alex was catching me so fast, so I had a lot of stress up towards the end. <laughs> and for the third uh, for the third time being here in Suzuka Circuit, what did you learn, especially from this race today? <laughs> oh, a lot. Um, I remembered again where the rivers were and where the standing waters were, so just avoiding that. that 
should be quite safe here. Thank you so much one more time. Enjoy your victory. Back to you guys. Well, Sean, you never quite know whether to take him seriously. Our general rule of thumb is not to take him seriously. He said he was feeling the pressure in the closing stages, but laughing as he said it. I mean, how aware do you think he would have been of, uh, of Alex closing in? Well, I think he'd be very, very aware, and he knows the calibre of Alex Howe, and Alex doesn't give up. Sounds like Sophie may well be down there with Alex Howe, who uh, closes in just a little on the championship points leader. Alex, starting from second to finish on second, uh, but we see you push really hard at the very end. Are you a little bit disappointed you cannot overtake Andrew? Well, at the beginning of the race, I push a little bit. With a safety car start, you, you can't do anything with the start, really. Uh, I push a little bit. The gap was closing a little bit by little bit. But I think it's the visibility is getting worse and worse as I close further. So I think it's very difficult to overtake in the wet in Suzuka. So with the championship at stake, I look at my rear mirrors and uh, third place is quite far away. So I really ran out of excuses to push. Um, at the very end, uh, the track condition improved. So I got a bit bored and pushed a little bit to see what the car can do without taking too much risk. So just to get some data to have a look at the end. So yeah, it's uh, good for the championship, but I, I couldn't win the race. Thank you so much, Alex. Uh, now it's our time to take a look at our awarding ceremony right now. Cross back to your guys. Well, it's nice to be able to set the fastest lap while bored behind the wheel, Sean. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I wonder. But anyway, I mean, the reality is he's a student of the sport. He loves it. He takes it very, very seriously, sometimes maybe too seriously. But he knew what he needed to do. He was watching what was going. And you ask whether or not he was aware and whether Andrew Harrianto was aware of where uh, Alex Au were. Yes, they were. They knew what was going on. And Alex Au, he, will have, uh, he would have had an abacus in the car, no doubt, working out what the championship points were like and what he needed to do. He didn't need to take a risk. He has an advantage over Andrew Harrianto. He pressed that. He found some more out, as he said, working on exactly what advantage had it in the championship. And that he didn't need to push any harder. He's got some data for tomorrow. If it is wet, again, these conditions are a little bit challenging, a little bit unpredictable. We're not 100% sure what tomorrow will be like. Today, they did warn there would be storms. It did hit, unfortunately, in qualifying and in the race. But we'll see what tomorrow brings. It could be a completely different day. Well, given uh, what we were fearing at the beginning of the race, Sean, I have... I think you'd have to say it's a tremendous success that we just saw that very early safety go and it didn't reappear. I think uh, the odds would be very much against that scenario. Uh, well, we were looking about 35 minutes ago as we were out on the track in the, in the heavens. We could see the weather moving in and then just as we came on air, the rain started to fall. We were pretty drenched coming back into the commentary booth and, uh, and you could see the spray on the track throughout this race. But they negotiated the entire 30 minutes safely and it was good clean racing in the end. It was good clean racing. We've seen that so often this year. And uh, I think now the drivers are starting to get a little bit serious. It's funny to say that they're taking it seriously. Of course, they've taken it seriously all year. But they have got involved in silly little incidents. It has meant that some of the favourites coming into this year, of course, you had Biram Bakhti and Andrew Harrianto, the reigning champion, who dominated the championship pretty much last year. They took most of the wins between the two of them. They leapt away in this championship. Yasser Shahin didn't win a race until Juhai this year. It was funny when we, we saw that win we commented that uh, he'd, he'd been there in the championship last year on the podium a number of times but hadn't quite made that step to the top step of the podium. They're all running at the absolute peak of their uh, abilities. Alex Howe, a very experienced campaigner, former AM Cup champion in the Audi Sport RLMS Cup. But they are really working very, very hard for points. They've had to push hard. The games have stopped. They have to be serious about this championship now. Yasser has an advantage. He commented after Shanghai that the advantage he took in, he dropped a little bit of time, but you can never have too big an advantage in a championship like this against drivers of this calibre in identical machinery. But this is exactly what the reigning champion needed. A pole to flag victory for Andrew Harrianto. He'll be very happy with that and be looking forward to another one tomorrow. Well, it is one of the most... Uh, uh most competitive championship races that we've had here in the cup, at least in terms of the depth of the competition. Last year's top two in fifth and sixth coming into this uh, into this race here in Suzuka. And let's not forget about Tony Bates, who was third in the championship standing room, 54 points. He's picked up another 10 points, I believe, here. So yes. he should be level with Burt Berenbachdi. So it is tight at the top. 
And, uh, well, we'll see a lot more coming out of tomorrow's race. Uh, who is going to be in the driving seat heading into the final race of the season in Malaysia. There's still a lot to play for, of course. The second seat in the road to Suzuka for the 10 hour next year. At this event, there is going to be an entry from the Audi Sport R8 LMS Cup. Of course, Anthony Liu won his way into that seat by virtue of winning both those races and top point scoring last time out at Shanghai. The winner of Suzuka will join him and then the winner on combined points from the, uh, in fact, you've got to go back to Zhuhai and Shanghai for Anthony Liu. He was top point scorer across both those events. But the winner of the first event at Adelaide, together with the final round of the championship when we get to the closing stages in November at Sepang in Malaysia, will take the third seat. Chris Reinker handing on the championship trophies to the podium place getters. So confirmation, Burt Birnbarkdi on the right of those three in third position. Alex Au in second on the left-hand side. And Andrew Harianto takes his first win of the season. It's not often we say that for a reigning champion as late as round seven. That just shows you how this season has developed. The smile's back. The I smile's wonder back. if that is going to be the turning point for the reigning champion. The well, giggles are back too. Yeah, yeah. Well, Alex, he's been, he's always fast, isn't he? He hasn't had the, the luck sometimes. He could well be the runaway championship points leader after the performance he set. He set the fastest lap in that race. He's won the, uh, the coveted Pirelli trophy as uh, they join side by side on the podium. Left of screen, Alex Au in the centre, Andrew Harrianto and right of screen, his 2018 rival, Burt Burambakti from Singer Plan B by Absolute. He's been doing a lot of miles this year too. Uh, was scheduled to be in the spa seat, had to make a, uh, a late step out and that saw, uh, of course, the man who's done more starts in the cup than anybody else, Jeffrey Lee, back into an Audi for that event. There is Chris Reinker, there is Martin Kuhl. And, of course, the Pirelli team that support this championship so well all up there on the podium. But the great thing is we get to do this all over again tomorrow with another qualifying session. That is at 11.15. They've managed to squeeze in just a 10-minute session because it was cancelled from today. 11.15 uh, local time here in Japan. So check your clocks depending on where you are in the world. And then the race, round eight of the cup, will start at 3 p.m. for us here. Champagne time! <laughs> well, they're going to get a shower one way or the other. There's a little bit of sprinkling rain out there. Conditions are certainly... Probably uh, already wet. Well, <laughs> I think they probably are. But uh, what a great result in the end. A lot of smiles. There'll be some happy drivers. And they'll be glad to have got that one through again. A very daunting circuit. Some of these drivers, it was the first time they've been here. So to get through and finish this one relatively unscathed was a great result. Of course, we'll go on to the GT4 podium shortly. Shows Takahara, the local driver alongside Wing Dang Jia. And uh, boy, wasn't he a happy man on the podium last time out at uh, Shanghai. <laughs> he knows how to celebrate. He had a great time, the Chinese driver, and is really yeah. enjoying his time with the Audi. Well, Sean, just notice Alex Au has now had four second place finishes from the seven races. Races. But it was really due high for rounds three and four, where he just got a single point in each of those races uh, with those pole positions, but not uh, able to finish the race. That was what really let his season down so far. But uh, yeah, as you said, getting on to the GT4 positions here. And Wang Tang No, it's not. In fact, it's going to be the Challenge Trophy, oh, which is right. new for yes. this year, for the new drivers into the championship. And I can tell you, George Nakis, who's up there on the podium, next again to Vincent Florendo. He's had a, a pretty good year after his return to the Cup. It's uh, the Jew high round, where he's on the podium outright three times, as well as taking top honours in the Challenger Trophy. He'll be happy to be up there again, especially as we we're talking prior to this race. He said, this is this is a tough event for me. I haven't done any miles here before. I haven't done any simulator laps. And this is my uh, debut run here. So too for George Nackis, left of screen. He'll be happy to be up there too. Just reward for uh, a guy who's making his GT3 debut first up ever. What a place to come to do it. Suzuka, the Australian driver. So he'll be pretty happy with that too. Bit of unaccustomed to being on a podium, receiving a trophy, but uh, not a bad journey north to come to Suzuka circuit and take home a trophy. A well, good result for him. Well, Vincent, sixth overall here, but he got uh, two third place finishes outright in Juhai in rounds three and four, so a great weekend for him there. We haven't seen that form from him elsewhere so far this year, but as you said, picking up first place in the Challenger Trophy 
here in Suzuka in round seven. Well, he did make the point when we went to Shanghai last time round. That is a modern day Formula One circuit. A lot of runoff, a lot of high speed corners, a lot of hard physical work behind the wheel. Whereas uh, Zhuhai, the longest permanent circuit in China, very much a stop start style circuit. So uh, it was easier for him to push the car. He found some advantage there. Of course, it was wet, if you remember the Zhuhai race as well. So that was a little bit challenging for the drivers too. That was something they had to uh, contend with. Whereas Shanghai was a bigger, th bigger challenge. Although he said just prior to this race that he felt that this was another challenge again beyond Shanghai. So to uh, be on the top step of the Challenge Trophy podium and to uh, be in that position to uh, gain some more solid points and finish sixth in this race, he'll be pretty happy with that. Well, a couple of more bottles of champagne to be presented and that will go to Shozo Tagahara. Local driver will take the title for this race not the title, but the race win in the GT4 category. But this is Wang Dengjia, who has been racing pretty consistently so far this year. You should have the championship points just beside you there. I should do. So uh, that's a little bit of uh, mathematics for you to battle your way through. Well, here you go, Sean. Uh, 36 points now for Mr. Wang Dengjia, which doesn't move him up too many places up, only into sixth. But he's nine points out of second place. Uh, still quite a long way behind Sheng Yan Wen, who uh, is here for Suzuka, uh, but unable to take part in today's race after that uh, incident in qualifying. So a very happy winner of this race <coughs> in the GT4 category. So a, uh, a top effort there. And uh, another nice result. Of course, uh, you can keep up to date with everything going on with the, uh, the championship. With the Audi Sport R8 LMS Cup website and of course the uh, various social media platforms as we go through to race 7 of the 2000 and sorry race 8 of the 2019 season the 8th season will be race number 88 it's a lucky one if you're a Chinese driver so that could be very interesting come tomorrow it is Wang Dangjia put your money on him for the race win there's every chance that could happen we'll see what the weather brings but make sure you stay with us that will come tomorrow you've got the timetable over there I think you've stolen it off me haven't you well qualifying is 11.15 Sean it's that memory again when's the race 3 o'clock local time let's talk more fact well, there you go, 3 o'clock local time. Thank you very much. <laughs> Stay tuned again. Send us your questions on Facebook. We'll do our best to answer them as well. And don't forget, tomorrow afternoon, after the race, we will go inside Zone Red, behind the scenes Boom. look at the championship, and we will be able to keep you abreast of everything that goes on this weekend. Thank you stay, for staying with us. Take us away, Mark. We, we will close out what has been a fantastic day. We will. We are hoping to have some very special guests. We'll confirm those tomorrow. So do tune in for after the race. But Andrew Harianto getting his championship back on track today with his first race of the, win, uh, of the season for the reigning champion. We'll see you tomorrow.